Welcome back to the Next.js full course. In this video, we're going to talk about how we can enable authentication with a specific auth card globally. So we don't need to mark our API endpoints with auth cards manually. So these are the topics that you are going to learn in this video. First, you're going to learn how you can enable authentication globally with a specific guard, for example, a JDBT auth card, how to exclude your public API endpoints from the global authentication system. And finally, you're going to learn how you can customize the passport auth cards. This is Sakura Dev channel and without extra explanation, let's get right into it. All right, I open up our Next.js project and so far in this course, we have implemented the JDBT local and refresh strategies. Also, we have implemented a separate guard for each of these strategies. Now we want to enable the authentication globally with the JDBT auth card. It means that we are going to enable the JDBT auth card for all of the API endpoints throughout our Next.js project by default. So we don't need to mark them manually with the JDBT auth card. In order to do that, I go to the auth module and here in the provider section of the auth card, we are going to add a custom provider here. So we're going to add an object and in the provide property, we're going to use a token name app guard. So we're going to import that from the NSJS slash core. I put it here and then we're going to specify a class for this app guard. So we're going to use the use class and then pass the JDBT auth guard. So let me explain what is this custom provider. When we use the app guard token here, it means that we're going to apply use guard decorator for all of the API endpoints in this application. And then here in the use class, we're going to specify which class must be passed to the use guard that we are applying on all of the API endpoints. So it is something like this in all of the API routes at use guards and then pass the JDBT auth guard and it applied on all API endpoints. We can also apply multiple auth guard on our API endpoint globally. So for doing that, we need to just pass another custom provider. Again, we're going to pass a custom provider here and specify the provide and pass the app guard token, which means that we are going to set the use guards globally on all of the API endpoints in our application. Then we're going to use the use class to specify which auth guard we are going to feed into the use guard. So here we're going to use role guard. Now role based access control is applied on all of the API routes of our application. And here there's a subtle point. We must put the role guard after the JDBT guard. And if you have watched the previous video, which was about the role based authorization, you understand why we need to put the roles guard after the JDBT guard. So if you know the answer here, why we keep this order, put that in the comment section below and I will pin the most accurate answer on the comment section below. And if you don't know the answer, just take a look at the comment section below. Okay. So again, make sure that you put the roles guard here in the provider section of the auth guard after the JWT guard. All right. Now let's open up our terminal and start our application. And then let's go to insomnia to test this functionality. But before doing that, let me go to the user controller and remove the JDBT guard and also the roles guard from the delete API. Now let's go to insomnia. And here, if I send the request to the delete user API without logging into our application, we've got an unauthorized exception. And that's because we need to log in into our application first and then provide a valid access token in the auth header of our request. If I go to the base URL, which actually just send the get request to our base URL, just localhost 3000, we also get a unauthorized exception because as I said, now our authentication is globally activated with JWT guard throughout all the APIs in our application in every module that we have. This is great, but we have a problem here. If I go to the login API and also provide a valid username and password in the body of our request and send the request, we also get a unauthorized error. And that's because, as I said, authentication with JWT guard is globally activated. And this route also now is guarded with the JWT guard, which is not ideal because the login API is a public route and we don't want to guard it with the JWT guard. So now 
we're going to move on to the next section in which we are going to exclude our public routes from our global authentication system. But before moving forward, if you're enjoying this video up to this point, don't forget to like this video. Your support means a lot to me and also helps me to create more content like this. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel. And if you think this video could help someone you know, feel free to share it with your friends and colleagues. Thank you so much for watching and supporting this channel. All right, let's move on. And now we want to create a custom decorator for excluding our public routes from our authentication system in our Nest.js project. So as you saw in the previous video, in order to create a custom decorator, we're going to go to the decorators directory and create a new file. We're going to call it public.decorator.ts. Actually, it doesn't need to be inside the decorators directory. You can put it anywhere you want. All right, now we need to use the set metadata function to set our public route as public. So here we're going to just export a function. I'm going to call it public. Actually, this is going to be the name of our custom decorator. So it is going to be a function. It takes nothing and it just call the set metadata function that comes from the nest.js slash common. And then here we're going to set a metadata on our API route under a specific key. So later we need to use that specific key to extract the metadata from the reflector class. So we need to memorize that API key. Therefore, we're going to keep it inside a constant and export it from this file. So I'm going to say export const and then is public key and then just set it to is public. All right, now we can use this key here to set the metadata on our route. So I use the is public key here as the key, and then we just set the value to true. So every API routes that use this public decorator will have a metadata under the key is public with a true value. All right, now we can go to our controllers and exclude our public API routes with this public decorator. So I get back to the auth controller and here in the login API, we're going to just use the at public. Okay, as you can see, it comes from the public.decorator file. And now this API routes have a metadata under the key is public, which its value is true. We can also use the add public decorator directly on the controllers. And now all of the APIs inside this decorator have a metadata with key is public and a value true. All right. So we don't do that. So let me just remove that. And now we need to just change the JWT off guard in order to exclude the routes that have been marked with the add public decorator. So I go to the JWT off guard and here we're going to implement the can activate function and then check the metadata of our APIs. If any API has a metadata under the key is public with a true value, we're going to just ignore the JWT off guard and actually allow the user to access that API without having a valid JWT access token in its request header. So here we need to implement the can activate function. It just return a Boolean. So I remove these types from the return type. And then here in the first place, we need to use the reflector class to check the metadata of our APIs. So we need to use the constructor in order to inject the reflector class in this class. So here we use constructor and then inside it, we're going to use private reflector and then set its type to the reflector class. It comes from the nest.js slash core and inside the constructor, we just call the super class. All right. Now we can use the reflector class here. It's just like the previous video. We're going to define a variable is public and get its value from the reflector class. So I use the this that reflector and call the get and all right function. We're going to look for a Boolean. So it just set its generic type to Boolean, specify the metadata key. It is coming from the is public constant that we have defined in the public decorator file. All right. And then we're going to specify where we are going to extract this metadata. So here we're going to use the context, which we have in the parameter of the can activate function. And its type is from the execution context class. All right. Now we can specify the context that get handler and also context that get class. Now it looks for metadata under the key is public key directly from the API handler. And if the API handler is marked with the is public, it just return the value, which is true. Otherwise, if the handler is not marked with the add public decorator, you just look at the controller to see if the controller is marked with the at public decorator. So 
as you can see we have higher priority on the handler over the controller class so if the metadata under the is public key is set on the api route or its controller class its value is extracted and is set to the is public constant here now we can check if the is public constant is true so here i'm going to say if is public is true we can just return true which allows the user to pass through this guard and access the protected resource all right otherwise we need to return the JWT auth guard can activate function. So here we're going to say return superclass that can activate function and pass the context to it. All right. So we just remove the Boolean type from the return type of this function. And now if any route is marked with the add public declarator will be excluded from our global JWT authentication. So now let's go back to Insomnia and send the login request again. As you can see, we have a internal server. So let's get back to our VS code, open up our terminal and it can read the properties of undefined for reading the sum function. So it must be from the roles guard. And, and yeah, since we have also enabled the role based access control globally here, after the JWT guard, the roles guard will be activated. So here we need to fix the roles guard. Here in the roles guard, it's actually just like the JWT guard now and uses the reflector to get the metadata under the roles key. So here we're going to fix that. We're going to say that if we don't have any metadata under the roles key, which means that the API route is not marked with the at roles declarator, we just want to ignore the role based authorization. So in the roles guard here, after getting the required roles, we're going to check if it is no, we just return true and allow the user to access the API. So here we just add this line. If not required role, which means that the required role is no, we just return true, which actually allows the user to bypass the global roles off guard. All right, now let's open up the terminal. Our application is running. Let's get back to Insomnia and send the login request again. As you can see, now we can access to the login API because it is a public route. So we don't activate the JWT auth guard on this route. And also since we haven't marked it with the at roles declarator, the role guard also allows the user to access this API. All right, so that's it for enabling the authentication globally. Let me just do a quick recap here. First, go to the auth module and add your auth guard in a custom provider then create a public declarator and then go to the JWT auth guard and extend it to check the metadata of the API routes to see if it is marked with the public declarator. If that's the case, just return true and allow the user to access the API without activating the JWT auth guard. Then go to the roles declarator and check if the API route is not marked with the roles declarator, just return true and allow the user to access the API without enabling the role guard all right that's it for this video and in the next video we are going to use oauth authentication with social provider like google provider so if you haven't subscribed to the channel make sure to subscribe now and hit the notification bell in order to get informed about the next video also if this video was helpful for you please hit the like button because i really need your help in order to grow on youtube thanks for watching and supporting this channel have a nice time bye bye